All right, I believe we are live on Love and Stuff, and I am Marcus Holmes, and I'm delighted to be here with you this evening, Tuesday, December 17th, 2019, uh, in the wonderful city of Detroit, and I hope that you will check in with us wherever you are around the world. I am Latrice Anderson, Brenda Law Landry has joined us, hello there. I am just um, tracking along on a separate device because I'm on Zoom. And I will also place, as I track, Alan Beeks has joined us. Thanks so much for coming to Love and Stuff. I will also track um, TJ the King has joined us. Marilyn Nelson, thank you uh, for joining us. Lenita Clark, thank you so much for joining us. I hope all of you that are joining will click uh, share and tag some people to join us in the conversation. Hello, Marilyn Nelson. I have not talked to my brother, but I'm gonna get over there. Uh, Latrice Anderson, thank you so much. Um, I hope that you will click share. Hello, Toy from Houston. I am so pleased that you are here. I hope that all of you that are here will click share and tag some folks to join us in the conversation. I am going to drop in the uh, comments, the link where you can, if you have Zoom or if you wanna download Zoom, where you can, um, Tasha Green has joined us, thanks so much, where you can join us, um, no, wait a minute. If you so desire to, you are welcome to join us here live. So the Love and Stuff Live has changed a little bit. Uh, Facebook has done up some things uh, that are switching um, swipe in ability around a little bit. And while they work those out, um, we are, okay, now wait a minute. I am given the opportunity for you to, wait, I'll try that. I, I will do this instead. For you to be able to join us in love and stuff. Dana Rudolph has joined us. Thank you so much for coming to love and stuff. Bear patient with me. I am just going to um, add, there we go. Add the invitation. Uh -oh. Come on, paste it. All right, so that you can join via Zoom. So there's the link there. If you put that link in your browser, it should allow you to join the meeting now. Yes, Sandra Beavers has joined us. Teresa Marshall has joined us. Thank you all for coming to Love and Step. I hope all of you will click share and tag those uh, folks that. Uh, are your five, uh, I'm looking around because I'm looking at different devices, your five closest Facebook friends, your five more popular, most popular Facebook friends to join us in the discussion. And just before I get into tonight's topic, I want to remind you that we do have a uh, gratefulness journey every day, t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, performance tees, you can purchase them on the Love and Stuff page, which I've tagged in this um, broadcast, and you can have them shipped. Now, at this point, if you ship them express, you can get them in time for Christmas, but it will, that will cost you a little bit more, but you can certainly get them in time to wear for the new year. Ring in the new year, joining us on the gratefulness journey. If you go to the Love and Stuff page, you'll see how to join the gratefulness journey to join us on a wonderful journey. And that is the shirt uh, that you can use uh, to support us, 25% of the net proceeds go toward disaster relief victims, to support the transient and homeless community, and to support scholarship efforts. And we want to definitely get those scholarship efforts going. Hello, Teresa Marshall, our senior associate producer has joined us. I hope he will come live with us. Uh, Corey Reed has joined us. Alan Curry has joined us. All right. So again, you can take that Zoom invitation and go live at any moment with us. We'd love to have you in. All right, I'm going to read the topic, and I think our senior associate producer will post that for us. Uh, so it's a little length, not too lengthy, but I don't want to have to uh, repeat it a thousand times. Okay, but I will if we have to for the purpose of conversation. All right, me and my wife watch your show, he says. We like the format. Thanks. Maybe you can help us decide something. Last year, I looked my beautiful wife in the eyes and told her, I'm not doing no more Christmas club savings. She said, suit yourself. I had decided no more gifts. 
Christmas is man-made and it ain't even worshiping Jesus whose birthday it is supposed to be celebrating, which I want to talk to you a little bit about that. I decided to pull names with my siblings, buy a gift for my wife and grown son, my mother and her dad, that's it. Now I know she loves to give, but I expected her to save to go all out. She saved all right, half of what she normally saves, but she plans on spending twice as much as if I had saved. I did, but not for Christmas. Now she's upset saying my money is her money. I'm saying, no, nah, babe, you tripping. Scale back or go into debt and go on a financial diet and pay it off by April like we used to do when we didn't have the sense God gave us. Am I wrong? So he's asking this question, is he wrong for putting his foot down and saying that he's not going to foot the extra part of the bill with savings? Rashida, the glam doctor, Lashawn has joined us and we're so pleased and proud for her, the launch of her soft lips collection. I may have said the name wrong, lip soft kisses, something about soft. You can go to her uh, website and purchase that and we'll, we'll be putting a link here and probably having her on the show. You know, we really uh, believe in the work and support what Rashida does and we're still hoping to make a partnership opportunity work for us as well. All right, Martez Turner has joined us, Tiffany Thunderbird. Oh, great. I don't think you've ever come to Love and Stuff. Welcome to Love and Stuff. Uh, Philip Patrick, thank you, sir, for coming back. Tanisha Wilson, happy holidays to you. Jerome Rutledge, Algina Johnson, Brian Morgan, thank you, cousin. Okay, he posted the topic. Thank you, Beatrice Lynette Woodward Hill. I would love some of you that are here to come on live. And the way you do that is click on the Zoom invitation and join us here live. So the live is a little different these days. I don't just swipe you in. You got to uh, click on the Zoom invitation and join us live. What do you say? Do you think that if you were married and you decided that you were not going to um, put uh, more uh, money into the gifts, uh, you decided that you're going to just scale back and your wife decided, hey, I'm going to go all out, but she didn't save as much and she wants to use part of your savings or your joint savings. Is your money her money? Should that be the case? What, what, how do you come to a compromise in this? Mary Love Jones has joined us. Thanks so much for coming to Love and Step. I hope all of you that have joined will click share and tag some folks to join you in the discussion. Five of your closest Facebook friends, five of your more popular Facebook friends to join us in the discussion. All right, so I wanna get you in. I hope that you will come on live with us so that we can discuss this topic. What do you think? Do you think that it should be left up to the individual or that should they both uh, come to some reason even though he gave her a year's notice and said, next year, we're not, I'm not going all out. I'm not participating in this Christmas savings. Anybody here, give me some likes if you've ever participated in a Christmas savings club or some kind of savings fund where you save a, a certain amount of your paycheck or savings each year dedicated toward uh, Christmas or something of that nature. Give me some likes if you've done that before. Anybody ever done some kind of Christmas savings club? Give me some likes. And if you've never done that, give me some... Uh, some mean faces, right? So I'm hoping to get someone to join us. Can I get Sandra Beavers to join us? Martez Turner, maybe, to join us. Toy Lancaster to join us. TJ the King to join us. Marilyn Nelson to join us, Brenda Landry, any and all of you. All you have to do is click on that link and it will add you into our live Zoom and I can have up to 10 people join me. So please feel free to join. This would be interesting. Beatrice says, anytime money is involved, whether joint or individual, a family discussion must take place. Okay, Beatrice, I wanna know if you can click on the link because I want to ask you this, if your husband had told you a year ago that he was not going to do the savings plan, whatever the savings plan is, it might be $50 a check that you save toward Christmas or $100 a check or whatever it is. Hello, Pam Bass. 
And if your husband told you a year in advance, now I'm not doing that next year. I'm scaling back. I'm gonna we're gonna pull names among my siblings. I'm gonna get your dad something. I'm about my mom something. I'm about my grown son something. That's all that I'm doing. I, I want you to join us and see if I can get Jay Gerald, a senior associate producer, to join us. I know he's typically working behind the scenes, but I want to have him join us in this discussion. Um, and some of the others that I named, if you're here still, join us in the discussion by clicking on the Zoom link and then joining the discussion. It will walk you through how you can join us, adding that link to your browser and how you can join us. So just open another browser um, on your phone or however you wanna open another browser, click that link and it will help you to join us, okay? Click that invitation. All right. So I wanna hear from you. And while you're coming, uh, I did have some inbox dialogue, right? So some of the topics that, you know, tend to ask some questions. And one of the things that he said uh, kind of struck me as interesting. And I asked him some questions about it. And he is a professed Christian. And he said, hey, you know, I, I'm not sure I any longer believe after having done some studying my own that Christmas is really when Jesus's birth was. And I thought that was interesting um, and because he's a, a devout Christian. And so I asked him, if you found out that Jesus's birthday was September 29th, would you celebrate his birthday on September 29th? He said, absolutely. I'm not opposed to celebrating Jesus's birthday. I would just like to have a real date. Uh, and, and so that has factored in once he learned that the Christmas tree and the Christmas festival, though it was more than likely the Christian response to a pagan festival. It was a summer solstice, a winter solstice festival, right? And so Christians at some point in response to that pagan worship decided to do something uh, that would celebrate the birth of Christ, who they believe for a number of different accounts biblically, and their scholars who have thought arguably about the date and when it was. Was it uh, BC? Was it AD? Uh, there was a census that was supposed to have gone on during that time. And some believe that Luke, uh, the writer of the book Luke, was referring, some believe he erred, that uh, he referred to a census that was. Um, to occur 10 years after Jesus was born. So if he was referring to that census that was happening, then Jesus wouldn't have been born when they say that he was born. Some say that that wasn't the only census that happened during that time. And the census that would require Joseph and Mary to go to Bethlehem would have been a smaller census. And that would have happened around the time uh, uh, that they say that Jesus was born. Some say King Herod died um, uh, closer to 1 BC, some say 1 AD, some say 6 AD, between 4 and 6 AD. So there are many different things because these are references you see in the scripture. And so a lot has been said, uh, even about uh, Mary shaking the uh, fig tree uh, leaf while she was giving birth. Uh, and a fig tree leaf would be in its best uh, form during the summer solstice. And some say, well, Yom Kippur would have been when the priest was um, doing incense in Luke, and that would have been 15 months before Jesus was born. So I asked that because the, the, uh, the husband was saying he's not even sure when Jesus was born. I said, well, are you sure that he was born is the most important thing. And if you are sure that he was born, when would, would you celebrate his birthday? And so we kind of had that discussion around Christmas being a Christian or a response to a pagan holiday. And I thought it was a good discussion that I wanted to bring forward. Joining us is Beatrice Lynette Woodward Hill. And what I want to say again, I said this when I saw her, Beatrice hasn't aged since, <laughs> we were in, since I was in ninth grade and she was in 10th grade. She still looks the same gorgeous. And it's unfair oh that the rest of us would have to age and she wouldn't. So hello, beautiful Beatrice. How are you? I'm doing well, Marcus. Can you hear me? I, can, I can't hear you, but you got to go to the lower corner of your screen and activate your um, audio. It should tell you to activate it. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I can't hear you now. I can just read your lips.
So like if you go to the mm -mm, if you go to the left corner where it says the vault, you should be able to click on um, mute your audio. You kind of have to unmute it. It automatically mutes. Okay, is that better? I've got my volume all the way up. Okay. I'm Let's still see. not hearing you. Let's see. Jay Gerald, are you can I hear you? Yes, you can. How are you? Can you see oh, me? Wait a minute. I don't hear Jay Gerald me. either. You can't see me though. Can you hear now, me? I see I see I see Jay Gerald. <laughs> I'll see you. I didn't do that. <laughs> nope, my. Okay, Jay Gerald. Yep, I'm here. Okay, I can hear you, Beatrice. It's fine. I don't know start. what's going on. I can hear you too. now. I can hear you, Beatrice. Wait, you're, you're, now your mic is off, Beatrice. It says so. Turn it back on. Here. Can you hear me? I can hear you both. Fantastic. We're both in now. Yep, you're both in now. Wonderful. Right. So we okay. have Beatrice, uh, Lynette Woodward Hill, and we've got Jay Gerald, our senior associate producer. Right before I go in, uh, Pam Bass says, I don't believe Christmas is about Jesus. I wasn't raised that way. I believe in, in Santa growing up, and that was Christmas. Um, I respect people who believe that, though. Either way, I would respect my husband as long as he gave a head up. We hear her fine. I hear him, too, and see him. Thank you. Can't, okay, I'm glad you all could hear them. I think it was something with me. Thank you so much. That's why I need to be in the studio, JJ, because I need a producer. I to do hey, all this stuff I can't. No, wait. If you only knew what I just went through. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you. You're, you, are the, exactly. you are the hardest working uh, producer that I know. I appreciate it. So listen, uh, let, let, let me delve, okay. delve really quickly into this uh, part of, you know, people don't believe that Jesus was born the time of Christmas. And right. while that's not the biggest factor to me, I can understand why it's important to some people. Um, I believe that Jesus was born. Um, I, I've been taught that it was December 25th and some of the scholarly logic around it ties out. I, I have also heard scholarly logic around him being born in September. So, right but he was born and there is a time that we should celebrate it i believe and whatever time that is i'm good if you tell me it's september 29th i'm going to celebrate it now i will agree that the christmas tree and necessarily the gift giving in the way that we might traditionally do it are not something that <laughs> is required in scripture no I, i'm not saying that but i think in the spirit of giving because we do know that, you know, from studying it, that there was a classism thing that people decided that they were going to uh, make sure that their, their, their neighborhoods were safe. So those that were considered gentry of high uh, class allowed people to come and get gifts from them. It was the higher class giving to the lower class. And that ended up being the classes giving to children. I get that. But in the spirit of being given a gift that I did not ask for, but that I needed is why I give gifts. I believe God gave us Jesus. We didn't ask for him, but we certainly needed him. We didn't even know we needed him. And the Bible says he came unto his own and his own received him not. So we didn't even know that we needed Jesus, but God mm -hmm. loved us so much that he gave us a gift that we needed in a time that we needed it. And in that same spirit is how I give. So I wanted to share that because that was from the inbox back and forth that I had with the individual. And I just wanted to bring that to light. Did you all want to add anything? What do you think about this Christmas? Is Christmas, Christmas, is it Jesus? Well, I definitely think, I definitely think that we have commercialized the concept of Christmas and it has become more about the tangibles, the mm -hmm. things that one would put and take from their hand to another hand. Mm -hmm. And it's not always about the need, like mm -hmm. you spoke about, mm -hmm. um, but more so about, oh, what do they desire? What do mm -hmm. they want? What can mm -hmm. I give them mm -hmm. in actuality to make myself look good? Right. Um, and so therein lies a problem for me 
Um, as I've gotten older, I've realized that there isn't a lot that I need. Mm -hmm. So at this age, I ain't expecting that nobody, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. um, but for the child, for the sake of the children, mm -hmm. I will do that. And even that within reason. Right. Now, I'm not buying no 12 year old, no iPhone watch. I don't know what to tell you. It's right. just not happening. Right. You about to get a Timex or uh, what a what in swatch watches? I don't know what you call them things. Right. Or something. Right. But um, even in that, there's a lesson to be learned. It's, and so we as parents and as older adults need to. This is an opportunity, a teachable moment mm -hmm. toward our younger people in you know what the the basic essence of the season is. Yes. You know, what we're celebrating, what we should be celebrating, and the best way to celebrate it so that our children then become um, conscious and productive citizens of the community. Fantastic. J. Gerald, did you want to add anything to that? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lena Brown and Angie Gowdy have joined us. I hope they will click, share, and tag some folks to join us. So let's get back into the topic. I just had to release some of that from the inbox discussion because I just wanted to put it out there and, and let other voices resonate with this brother who is like, ah, I don't know so much about, you know, I don't want him to get lost in whether there is any tie to Christmas and Jesus. I want him to get more lost in the deity of Jesus and the reason that he came. Um, so what do you think about this? The brother has told his wife, listen, we, I'm scaling back. And traditionally they have both uh, kind of had this Christmas club savings where they put an X amount of dollars in from every paycheck so that they could fund Christmas. Uh, he said years ago, they didn't used to do that. They would just max out credit cards and then just rush to pay everything off by April. They had an April day line by which they had to pay everything off, but they kind of matured and said, hey, listen, we're gonna save a certain amount and that's gonna be Christmas. Well, last Christmas, he told her, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm scaling way back. And she told him, suit yourself. Christmas comes and he's made a decision to pick names among his siblings. He's going to buy her dad a present. Her mom is deceased. He's going to buy his mom a present. His dad was never in his life. And he's going to buy his grown son a present. And that's it. She has this long list and has an amount that she wants to spend. That's twice the amount of what she saved. And so he's saying, tough luck, either scale back or go back to when you did that same thing. You paid it off in April. I'm not using any of the money that I've saved to support that. What do you say about that? So once, so let me, let, let me, <laughs> let me say this first. Brothers, whatever you do, make sure before you make a decision that you talk about it and come to a, a mutual decision and not talk about what you're going to do on any topic. You know, this is not the first time, and I know it won't be the last time, that we had a topic from the inbox where all it takes is a conversation ahead of time that will head off a whole bunch. Our topic last week was the same thing. But listen, J listen, J. Gerald, though. <laughs> He, he, he had this conversation he had this conversation a year ago and she said and she said and she said suit yourself now okay but he made the decision the decision was made he and, said and, and her response was suit yourself what but that ain't what she bro bro we all know that ain't what she meant <laughs> Wait, wait, let me ask Beatrice. Hold on, brother. Uh, Beatrice, what do you say? <laughs> now, I'm going to say this. My, uh, my initial response was, if he told her that I think this is what we should do, her response of suit yourself almost is like an agreement. Then when it comes time, and here she come, Johnny come lately saying, Oh, babe, guess what? And he's like, I don't know what to tell you. Um, <laughs> I can't say that that would be unfair. Okay. Me, being been a wife, if my husband said, okay, honey, this is the way we should do this. If I had a problem with it, 
I would have had that opportunity to say, well, wait a minute, let's discuss this because what if I go over or what if I decide that I want to do some things or here we go. What if the Lord lays somebody else on my heart? You see what right. I'm saying? Right. That has happened. So with all of that, you know, I think there probably should be some wiggle room. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he should completely go back on that and just open up the floodgates and say, okay, babe, you went a couple, you know, grand over. Here you go. I think even if he decides to loosen the reins, there should still be a limit even on that. And in that moment when he loosens them, say, look, we're going to have to come to a decision. This is going to be the last time we do this. Are we in agreement? And he needs to have that discussion with her to be sure that she's on the same page because y'all know we are, I hate to put it in a gender kind of thing, but we're emotional. And sometimes we purchase things emotionally. And sometimes we go a little bit overboard. I'll admit it. However, I think with the man, if you're going to go Bible, the man mm -hmm. being the head of the home, the mm -hmm. priest of the home mm -hmm. and the head of the wife, you know, it's not a, you know, a dictatorial thing. But once he makes a decision, it's for the good of the household. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. try to adhere to that as best we can. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If she goes over by a couple dollars, I get it. But she just then blew through it. To my, oh, he'll take care of it. Sister, you might be embarrassed. I'm just going to tell you because I know I wouldn't risk it myself. Mm -hmm. I would just be like, okay, I got to try to stick to this right here. Even mm -hmm. though I told him, suit yourself, re you know, come on, let, let's be reasonable. Come, mm -hmm. let us reason together. Mm -hmm. One of those kind of things. Okay. J. Gerald, I'm going to get hold this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, J. Gerald. Wait before you respond. Rick Cranford has joined us. Q. Latrice Merritt has joined us. Pam says they were both aware and she was aware a year ago. I think she should know she should know and she should work within her budget. Okay. J. Gerald, what do you say in response to that? So let's go biblical. He should have dealt with her in knowledge. He, she didn't, watch this. She doesn't say suit yourself. She said shoot yourself. No, she didn't say <laughs> shoot yourself. J. <laughs> She wanted to say, she there's no, mm. she didn't want to say what she wanted to say at the time because she was about to get emotional <laughs> in your words, Beatrice. And okay. the words were the case, feel wrong. So, in order for her to say biblical, she said, <laughs> Shoot yourself instead of what she wanted to say was shoot yourself. <laughs> and well, do, you, like do you think that this husband like, would know his wife well enough to know that she was saying shoot yourself instead of suit yourself? No, he in love. No, he ain't, he he in love. Conversation. <laughs> he made a decision and came to her and said, This is what we do. This is what I'm doing. But, she said, shoot yourself, but it sounded like soup yourself. And so in her response, now she had 12 months to kind of see if he was saving towards that, have discussions to increase her savings. I mean, she had a whole 12 months to say, you know, I, you weren't serious, were you? I mean, she had a, she had that time to be able to have some conversation mm -hmm. with him, mm -hmm. not to go out and make your list and check it twice. And then you need twice as much. Marcus. She was never on that page. That's why she made that list. Mm -hmm. she, he, she was probably on the same wavelength, thinking he had 12 months to change his mind. And so That's where was the conversation that she was attempting to change his mind over those 12 months, I guess? We don't have her side of the story. I understand. <laughs> I think she I think she, she made multiple opportunities. Mm -hmm. For him to change his mind and said it, but mm -hmm. he might not have heard her okay. because he didn't. Get <laughs> and so, knowledge. and so, Jay Jarrett, would you just give her the money? What would you do? No, we got to have a talk. I mean, if I felt that strongly about something being better for the household and how it's presented, mm -hmm. then I would have that conversation. And now let's just say. Got you, but let's say that you. She said, "Suit herself, so, suit yourself," <laughs> and you believed it. And so okay. now she has this list as twice as much as what she originally, uh, as, as what she saved. How do you handle it now that you're in the situation? 
we gonna sit down and talk and let's go through this list. Let's okay. let's go. If if you feel that strong after I said what I said and you told me suit myself, then let's go ahead and we gonna have this conversation at this point. Mm -hmm. Because once again, here we are. The conversation was never had between the two to come to a mutual decision. Yeah, I disagree with you why. there. I disagree with you there. If he had a conversation, I'm with Beatrice. She has a responsibility to say, no, I'm not with that. He he had okay. the conversation by saying, no, I'm I'm not going to save toward this. And uh -huh. she, she thought, well, baby, we should because all of the things that Beatrice said, the Lord might lay up some children on our heart. We might want to go buy gifts for people that don't have. That mm -hmm. was her chance to express how she felt. He expressed how he felt. So he she I held accountable as an adult to respond in kind and say, well, you know what, baby? I know you're the head of the house, but I don't agree with that. Why doesn't she have the same accountability? Okay, so right now, we're at this point of where we don't know what we're doing for Christmas. Well, we know so what she intends to do. Well, how it's do we get past not you this? intend to help her finance it. Right. I have so a question, how though. Get, how do we Has she already that? purchased these things, or are she just, these just things she desires to purchase? These and are things she desires to purchase. She has her list, and it is double the amount she has saved. And now she's coming to oh, him she saying, hasn't spent any hey, money yet. Okay. yeah, she hasn't oh. spent the money. She's saying That's to him, hey, that. this is the amount that I need over or above what I have. Mm -hmm. That's one of those, baby. We need to talk. Mm -hmm. And so you're it's going through the list, and now you're checking uh -huh. it the third time. How do you pare down this list? Oh, we're going to come to it. We, we'll have to come to some kind of agreement as to how this list is going to be pared down. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm feeling as strongly about how I feel about spending this money and about Christmas and everything else. So now. If the conversation was had, if it wasn't had, it's time now to say, okay, this is why I feel the way that I feel. I understand. And, and so tell me why we have this list now. Let's talk about the list. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to buy that for so-and-so? You want to do it? So, okay. So what, what are we buying? Why are we buying it? And let's make sure that next year we don't have this same issue. And, and so I'm wondering... That, after that conversation and she still wants to buy everything on the list, do you give her the money or do you say, go in debt, go in peace and go in debt. And then you pay it off by April. Like we used to do. Cause he said they used to buy everything that they wanted budget or not. And then they would pay it all down by April. So, so does he allow her to do that or does, or would you pay to prevent her from going in debt? There are usually, and, and we all know this at this time of year, usually people, we just, and we just discussed it, people have lists and they do things at holiday time, nine times out of 10 based on emotions and not because they've done some calculations as to this is, this is what we're going to do. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not a calculation later step is is not a mental or mind uh, uh, acknowledgement as to what we're mm -hmm. going to do mm -hmm. but it's really about emotions yeah. so why are we why do we do this every year yeah why me, are we buying the gifts i'm going to introduce some more folks that are coming to the room but i still want to answer to my question are you going to pay it if, if she doesn't want to whittle down the list or are you going to let her go in debt hold on one second david i'm not going to lose my Hold on one second. David Carter has joined us. Darcia Sanders has joined us. Linda Allen, Ingrid Poole, Michael Thornton, Valerie McCune, Eric Powell. Thank you all for joining us. I hope you will click share and tag five people to join us in the discussion. Five of your closest Facebook friends and five of your more popular Facebook friends to join the discussion. So back to you, JJ. Would you, if she does not want to whittle down the list, you've gone through all of the psychoanalysis of the emotional giving of Christmas. And she <laughs> is not buying that on the back rack on sale with a red tag on it. She wants everything on the list. Yeah. Are you going to fund the additional amount or are you going to say, figure it out? If I can afford it, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to lose my marriage over a list. 
And I, I don't know. Say, I don't, but I, I am going to, well, wait, wait, wait. But I will save my marriage because we're going to have some discussion as to why so that this don't happen no more. In no oh. situation. I, I'm not even talking about the Christmas. That, mm-hmm. th- this goes deeper than Christmas. Mm-hmm. That if we can't have a conversation and discuss things, then this is going to happen in January. Yeah, but you it's override me. When we get ready to pay. I love that, but you're overriding Jay Gerald. He had the conversation. She she didn't evidently yeah. believe him, right? He had the either, conversation. Either she didn't believe him or she thought that she could convince him, right? I agree. He had the conversation. I mean, now, she, maybe his she, conversation she, doesn't go as in-depth as maybe yours might or mine or Beatrice or whomever, but he said to her a year in advance, hey, this is what I want to do. This is the direction that I'm going in. Ask the leader of this house. And she said, suit yourself. <laughs> Obviously, okay. this type of change is not normal for them. It's mm-hmm. not normal for him to right. put boundaries on things or else right. she would feel so comfortable to surpass them. Mm-hmm. So right. either he's been lenient in times past mm-hmm. and she feels comfortable going over okay. or mm-hmm. not set boundaries. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and she's like, oh, psh, he'll take care of it. If Listen, if he been saved, if, you know, if he hasn't spent any money, then he got money that I don't have right now. Okay. So... Right. Somewhere along the lines, even though he's voiced it, either this is new to her or this is not anything that she's taken too seriously. Correct. In which case, we you, they now need to take a look at communication. Yes. Because me, when I say it, I, like Nisi, you, like you me really said, I said you what really. I said when I said it. And that's right. pretty. Right. And so right. Be, just put yourself in the situation, even though you would not be, uh, it sounds like a person who would go above the budget. But if you were really just decided that you wanted certain things, would you go in debt if your husband told you he's not going to fund it? I absolutely would not. Because while you just said, Marcus, I heard you say he'll tell her to go in peace. Scripture also says follow peace. So what that means is you not going to cause no friction for some gifts when you don't absolutely have to. What's the purpose? Right. You know what I mean? I could see if it were a household bill that needed to spend the money on, but mm-hmm. we're talking about gifts that you absolutely don't absolutely have to buy around Christmas time. There are so many people that you could purchase items for at any given time of the year. Mm-hmm. So why wait until now to do that and, and jeopardize, you know, the relationship that you may have with your husband in this area? It's just not worth it to me. Got it. Timothy McKay has joined us. Felicia Lee Scott has joined us. Francois Morris joined us. Some of you that are joining are in couples or in relationships. I would love to have you join us. We can have up to 10 people join us. And so I would love to have you join us. We're talking from the inbox of a husband who decided a year ago that he was not going to go out, all out, as it were, for Christmas. And his wife kind of heard that message and told him, suit yourself, or as J. Gerald Harvey would say, shoot yourself. <laughs> And she is deciding that she's going to double what she saved. She's going to spend twice as much as what she has personally saved, expecting her husband to foot the rest of the bill. Is that fair? The husband is saying, I'm not footing the rest of the bill. You can go in debt like we used to and pay it off by April. What do you say? I liked what Beatrice said earlier about maybe he loosens the reins a little bit and there's some room for compromise. Uh, He kind of sounds at this point, it's no but, you know, maybe in, in the hopes of keeping uh, peace in the marriage, he will say, okay, now, nah, baby, this time I'm going to let you get two of those things, but not all 12. You know, maybe he finds some place in the middle. Do you think that that's wise for him to do? Or should he hold his ground to let her know that he's really serious about his position? Margaret uh, Louise Butler Hightower has joined us. What do you all think about that? Should he hold his ground or should he give some wiggle room like you talked about a little bit? Stand your ground. <laughs> See, there he go. There he go. I don't know what to do with him. I, I think he's he's being influenced by two weeks. <laughs> two weeks not even here. Uh, but if I may. Says she is financially responsible and she should listen to her marriage. Okay. 
if I may be use some transparency just for a moment, I Please. was in a similar situation. It wasn't about Christmas gifts, however. Okay. But I wanted to spend a certain amount and we talked about it. And this was the end result. If you spend over what we've decided, you are now taking away from your hair and nails. You are now taking away from your weekly or bi-weekly trip to the mall. You are now taking away from, you know, eating out lunch for a week or a month versus brown bagging it. So now you make the decision. If we're mm -hmm. going to spend over this, then mm -hmm. how are you going to accommodate so that it doesn't affect the household? Mm -hmm. So perhaps they should look at it in terms of if I overspend this, if we overspend by this amount, dear, since you are dead set on doing it, mm -hmm. how are you prepared mm -hmm. to now take up the shortfall Mm -hmm. you know for later on since i've spent this money that means later on when you come to me with i need some bundles i won't have it because i spent money on these gifts now what are you prepared to do that's and good that's a conversation that they now need to have if she's just going to do it yeah that's good that's really good i, I think in his mind he's just thinking figure it out and use your credit cards. Don't use any of our stuff in common and you pay it off. But I think you're raising, you know, you bring it home when you say, okay, now this is what it impacts. How do you want to work that out? I think that's good. Corey Mildred King has joined us. Thanks cousin. Pam says a little bit of wiggle room, but not a whole lot, okay? Um, and so Jay Gerald, of course you say, stand your ground. Um, and I don't know how you stand your ground and then she gets in credit card debt, you know, by February, do you decide, you know, you're going to help her or you just let her, Bruh. you just watch her, you know, <laughs> crunch through it Bruh. until I, uh, so, so, uh, bruh, he don't pay <laughs> one way or another. He don't pay. He's paying now. <laughs> he's going to, he's going to pay. He's, he's, I don't, no matter how you get out of this, one way or another, he's going to end up paying. And it's, it's going to be on him as to how he wants to pay. So when you say one way or the other, why do you think that he's going to be on the hook for it? All right. So let's talk about, let's let's give the scenario that y'all just gave. Mm -hmm. Now, is he's, <laughs> okay, so he sees this, uh, let's say, he sees this uh, boat that he wants. Mm-hmm. Then it's a tit for tat. Okay, so now what you gonna sacrifice in order to get that boat? But he saved. He saved his money for whatever his purpose was. Okay, but and, and, but one way or another, mm -hmm. he's going to end up paying out of his pocket and in other ways for her to not get what she wants. So I'm going with Beatrice, um, her instance of the hair and the nails. Maybe okay. she just don't have her hair and nails done. I still love you, but you ain't all you ain't all curled up and you ain't all acrylic up. Or maybe, and, and, oh, maybe we can't go out to dinner this time. Maybe, you know, we gotta we gotta save. Or maybe it is, baby, did you make enough so that you'll have enough to take to lunch? Because you know you're gonna run short on lunch. I mean. And that's fine. As long as if she agrees to that, that's fine. But what if she doesn't but, agree? Do you think it's okay for him to withhold the money? Is what I'm saying. We supposed to okay for him to say, "Hey, I saved this money, and no, you can't use it." Uh, I don't know if that means it's in a separate account, but I saved this money. You can't use it, and no, you can't use our joint credit cards. You got to use your own. You got enough credit to handle it. You use what you want to do. That's, that if she agrees, that's fine. But what but, if she uh, doesn't agree? I guess I'm asking. I, and that's and that's my issue. I don't see her agreeing to none of that. So what does she do? What do what does she do if she doesn't agree? Does she steal the money? <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. What you're saying? <laughs> what I'm saying. I heard is, Jay Gerald say that they, they they are one, right? So guess what? They're one. If they go into debt, if she goes into debt, they go into debt. Mm -hmm. And that's so right. Now, that's, that's right. That he needs to make the, he, you know, if he made this yep. decision, then she made her decision. Guess what? I think it's his yep. turn to make another decision. So if we're going to yep. go into debt, now we need to make a decision as to how we're going to pay this debt off. And it's not just a and matter of is, 
do it by April again. It's just do right. it for the last time. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is and this is the issue. This is why this is not about Christmas. This is why this is not about the gifts. Yeah. It's yeah. about them communicating. I and, think it's a, and, I think and, it's about here's about another here's another. Here's here's the here's the here's the bigger picture, even in the communication. It's not so much about communicating about what I want to do, what I need, what what I think. Mm -mm. It's more so about communicating what we need, what we need to do, and why. The why is the issue because no, it sounds like no one understands the why. Why do I feel this way? Why do I feel I need to do this? Why do I feel we need to go in debt? Yeah, I, I guess I'm saying, I agree. I hear what you're saying and I, and I appreciate that. I guess I'm saying, yes, communication is important, uh, though I think he's already communicated. But I think this is more about emotional spending and more about boundaries. Boundaries, yeah. I, I agree. I, would I think agree this is about more, boundaries. I, I don't think he failed I, to communicate. It would be a different I, story if Christmas came and he said, you know what? I'm not spending the dime. Now that would be a failure to communicate. But this man communicated 12 months in advance. Wow. As an adult to another adult. And unless they, unless she feels uncomfortable saying, speaking back to him to say, well, honey, no, this is how I feel. She doesn't understand boundaries. She and didn't feel uncomfortable to say you got to pay the bill. And he hasn't practiced boundaries enough for her to understand them. Uh -huh. so, so it's not so a communication here. failure to me. It's a boundary failure. It is, this is what's important. I want to scale back. I don't want to spend that kind of money and I'm not going to save toward it. So, and so she says, is, suit yourself, but maybe it means shoot yourself, but at the very least, it means my, I'm driven by how I feel in that season. I'm mm -hmm. driven by how I am moved emotionally. And I'm not going to say, because if I say it, Beatrice, it would be sexist. I'm not going to say all women are emotional as it relates Thank to you. decision taking. But a lot of women that I've had the pleasure of interacting with so are much. emotionally driven around decisions that mm -hmm. involve people they care about and involve giving to people as an expression of their sure. care. Women are more emotionally driven by that. If you think about women talking about one of them getting engaged or saying, what, how many carrots is the ring? How much did he spend? They're emotional around the value of something because they're driven by those emotions. Not all women, ladies, not all women. I'm just talking about a small pool that I've interacted with. <laughs> and so knowing that maybe there maybe you set boundaries and say okay we're not doing that next year and you check back in six months and say you know I, i'm just reminding you i'm not doing it maybe you have to build in buffers for the boundaries but it sounds to me that she's not used to having boundaries and now she's got a pretty hard fast one that he's saying i'm not relenting off this boundary as a matter of fact you work it out now that you work it out part should evoke some conversation, right? She should be saying, well, you know, how can I do that? What can I do? And that's a whole conversation in and of itself, which Beatrice kind of laid a great groundwork. I hope that uh, both of them have the chance to listen to tonight's episode and say, oh, wow, that's good. You know, Beatrice has laid out for them some things. Maybe I don't get my hair done every week because I know mm -hmm. some sisters who have husbands who take really good care of them and their hair is done every week and their nails are done every week and they get uh, the fill-ins or whatever they get retouched up every week. Mm -hmm. And maybe if they had to sacrifice that because of emotional giving, so it's every other week, it won't kill them or the relationship. They just might not be as fresh. But it's, oh. it's boundaries. It's about setting boundaries that are comfortable for both of you. And when one sets boundaries, then if you feel uncomfortable with that, you've got a duty to talk to your partner about how you're feeling about those boundaries. But if you don't think that the partner is serious, it's not a real boundary to you. Exactly. And, yeah. and here's the other, so, so here's, I'm going to agree to disagree about the conversation. Okay. okay? Because I believe, uh, I, 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 the only reason I say it is because I do believe that conversation also has to have understanding. 
and we have to have mile markers along the way in order to make sure that we still are on the same page and understanding what I said back 12 months ago, that it's not just all of a sudden, it was something I said 12 months ago. And, it, and now that there's no telling what has transpired <laughs> in the last 12 months that I've done, or that I've said, or that I've communicated that have caused you to think otherwise now that we're 12 months later down the line from what I said 12 months ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that I hear that. I, I, I hear that. It still sounds like boundaries to me. It sounds like she didn't believe them. It didn't sound like she didn't understand them. It sounds like she didn't believe them. She didn't believe because, and then it's, uh, so what happened? What happened to cause her not to believe? Because so she don't set boundaries. Well, the other thing is, is what did I, did I do anything along the way to yeah. cause her? Yeah, to not I did set boundaries. And to, and to bring down the boundaries. Yeah, or, I didn't set boundaries. Was a boundary. right. I always, I always give in. I, I always let you do what right. you want to do. Exactly. exactly. I always relax them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or let me go. Is somebody? In, well, I won't, I won't go there. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna bring you back. Okay. Let me. Uh, let me go to some of the folks that are joining. <laughs> Sonia Sharice has joined us. Henry Wells the third. Mike Ellison. Pam says that's not fair to him though, and make and that makes me really sad. Well, Pam, come on and tell us why you're really sad. Michelle Ballard, thank you so much for coming to Love and Stuff. We're praying for you and the loss of your dad. I couldn't be there with you for the funeral, but we've been praying for you. I hope that you feel up to coming on if you want to share. I think about, I think it's about healthy boundaries and obviously they're not setting those. I agree with you, Q Latrice Merritt. Yes, I just said that. Yep, you sure did. Arcel Weary, thank you, sir, for coming to Love and Stuff. All these cast technicians coming through here. But they have been doing this one way for years, and this is new to her in all fairness. She may be having a hard time with his new feelings about giving. Yep. Sounds like a woman who doesn't want to listen to the leader, the man. She wants him to hike the football to her, her, her David Carter. They are or should be partners. I think David Carter, to some degree, I think she's not used to having to have to listen to him. She probably mm -hmm. is, and, and I could be wrong, but she probably is used to saying, well, babe, let's do this. And he caves in or he gives her whatever she wants. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think though, at some point you have to build boundaries and you have to stick to them. Maybe the markers that you heard Jay Girl mention need to be built in that process. But at some point, we all have boundaries that we have to adhere to at some point. And so I think it's fair to expect that in a relationship, when one communicates to the other about a boundary, that you either take it seriously or you don't. And at some point it's either gonna be or not. I think he runs the risk if he gives too much wiggle room that should never really take him serious. Mm -hmm. So I think you give some wiggle room, you give grace, but I, so I don't think you stand your ground as, as J. Gerald says. I think you give some <laughs> grace, but, but I think that you do have to hold firm to say, now, now this is what I said and this is what I need you to agree to. Okay, Pam Bass, I think you should uh, come in. David Carter, I think you should come in. The link to join us. <laughs> I dropped in the comments, so you're welcome to join us. Uh, Beatrice, I don't know if you disappeared on us, I think. I, I'm sorry, I got a text message that I needed to respond to. I apologize. Oh, no problem. No problem. I understand. I appreciate it. Hey, Marcus. Yes. So the link, you cannot copy and paste out of the comments. So what I'm going to do is I'm about to put the link onto the page. So they now, have to go to the love and stuff. Now, and what I'm showing to... is that you can click on the link. I put it in the comments and I can click on it. So <laughs> maybe that's the app as well. Yeah. Yeah, if they have the app, they can just take the meeting ID number from there and enter it. But looks like I can copy and paste the link in the browser and get to it. So I don't know if it's just because I'm it on be the, a computer. Yeah. I don't know. Dr. Okay, Mabu so Funaro is watching. Thank you, Dr. Funaro. Thanks so much for coming to Love and Stuff. I hope all of you that have joined will click share and tag some folks to join us in the discussion. And it's a lively discussion at that. We have Beatrice Woodward-Hill here, uh, who hasn't aged since the 80s. 
<laughs> we have Jay Gerald Harvey, <laughs> our associate producer, who was saying, "Stand your ground." <laughs> <laughs> and I think they both are giving some sage wisdom to this couple who the husband is saying, look, I gave you a year's notice that I was not going to invest a lot of money in Christmas. I don't believe that money should be invested that way. And she told him, suit yourself. Of course, Jay Gerald says, she said, shoot yourself. And so <laughs> she has determined that she has a list that she has checked twice. She has saved X amount of dollars. And to pay for everything on that list, she needs double the amount. And she is looking to her husband to pay the difference. And he is saying, absolutely not. Go in debt or scale back. What would you do? Yep. What would you tell your spouse if you were in this situation? Beatrice says, give some grace, a little wiggle room. So this is the first time he's the really dead to her, it sounds like. Say it again. This it sounds as though this is the first time that he's pretty much, you know, put his proverbial foot down. Maybe yeah. he should, you know, give her some wiggle room this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got to. He's he's go <laughs> he's gonna have to. He's, he's gonna have. He's, he's she got ain't to. ready. She ain't ready. She going kicking and screaming, but she gonna have to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think he has, I think wiggle room is in order. Some grace is in order, but I think he does have to put at least the heel of his foot down and say, now I'm going to give you an extra this amount, but I'm not going to give you everything. And so scale back, make your choices, you know, buy some Hallmark cards. You know, people don't believe in dry cards. I get them all the time. Do we know how long people <laughs> have been married, Marcus, or does that even play a part in this? Because I'm thinking if they're newlyweds, Maybe she's not used to this kind of thing. If they've been married for a while, now nah, he didn't do something new in the pot. I don't know. They've been married six years, but they lived together for five before that. So they've been- Oh together. yeah, they old heads at this. Yeah, he so didn't come up with some new stuff. Right, because that, so <laughs> for 10 years, they've been doing this. It's a habit. Well, he says yeah. that they, he said that they used to do that, but they got wiser, he thought, and they decided to do this Christmas savings club. But before that, they used to just go all out and just use their credit cards and then pay it off by April. That was their rule. Then they decided we'll do a Christmas club and that's going to be our budget. Now he is saying, I'm not doing the Christmas club savings. I'm just going to buy the few gifts that I'm going to buy and that's it. So he has kind of right. over time been paring it down where, mm -hmm. you know, she to, just, to he gets emotional as you heard Beatrice say. Sometimes that's how that happens. And she says, oh, it's some children at the church that they look like they need some coats <laughs> and I'm going to buy them. I'm going to Burlington, baby, and I'm going to buy them some coats. Praise God. Praise, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The baby's got some coats. Right? And, and yep. he's looking like, well, I hope you're going into debt for Jesus because I'm not paying for it. <laughs> the Lord will make a way. The Lord is making press, a way in interest. Press, press down, shaking together, right? And running home. over an in interest. <laughs> That's funny. And she is determined oh. to do what she wants to do. She's so, trying to get the overflow. She's running for the overflow. Yeah, I want to give I want to give them some some more wisdom from you two on this emotional buying. What is okay. it? So most of the time, it's to make people feel good about themselves when they do well for others. Mm -hmm. And 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 unfortunately, there's a lot of misplacement with that because there's a lot of people who survive through life by trying to do good for other people and that makes them feel good, but they really don't experience joy or anything else because they're just trying to do for other people to feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. I, know, I, know some, I know some people, I know a person who will go to the hospital and visit people and we'll sit in the room and all that, and this family members and relatives and you know church members or whatever, 
but they'll do that just so that they'll feel better about themselves. It has nothing to do with them actually doing it for the person that they're visiting, but they mm -hmm. do it because that makes them feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. So, so and, and yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's kind of tricky a little bit, don't you don't think? Like that's kind of tricky a little bit because you do feel good when you do for other people. But I don't know that That's everybody true. recognizes that they're doing good to feel good. Right. right. Normally, when you but, do good for other like people, you do feel good. You feel amazing right. if you're able to do something for someone else. But if your sole purpose is to get that feeling of feeling amazing, you're I'm missing it. And I'm not sure everybody yep. understands that distinction. Do you think people get that? Yep. I don't believe that the people who are doing it for that sole purpose or for that reason really mm -hmm. understands that that's mm -hmm. what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And it, how, it's, it's, how it's would you suggest it's, that it's, they tell the difference? How do you suggest they tell the difference? How do you know when you're giving for the sake of giving versus giving uh, from your heart? Well, most people don't do that. However, the only way that you can tell the difference is to look down deep inside yourself and ask, why am I doing this? You know, and, and usually some outside persons will see it and will bring that to their attention. Now, whether they accept it or not, that's, that's usually the issue. <laughs> usually they're not accepting it. Now, that's why I do this. They, they, you just don't know me. You know, that, that type of thing. But okay. I do know people. Mm -hmm. who will do those things just so that they will feel better about themselves, about their lives. Mm -hmm. and, and, and really it's like uh, uh, living outside of their reality. Mm -hmm. I always think if you, if you do stuff and it brings more harm to you than it does good for others, you might want to evaluate that. If what yeah. you're doing brings more harm, not that there won't be times that you won't sacrifice to do for others, but if it brings right. more harm to you than it does the greater good, then that might be something you want to evaluate. Right. And especially like even in this case, this is like one of those times where you really have to say, you know what? Am I going into debt trying to help somebody and, and I'm not helping myself first? Or mm -hmm. does this hurt me more trying to help out somebody else? than what I'd be doing for myself and then and, and doing a greater good, trying to get out of debt and helping somebody instead of staying in debt, trying to help somebody. Okay, all right, before Beatrice responds, Linda Phillips has joined us, Chantel Michelle Jackson has joined us, Pam says obligation is the reason many people give. Pam, I'd love for you to expound upon that. I wish you would come on the Zoom. Uh, Jacob Moore has joined us. Thanks cousin for coming. Uh, what do you think, Beatrice? I think that when we look at, okay, case in point, mm -hmm. there are people who will give and based on the reaction of the recipient, they yep. may or may not get a rush from that. Mm -hmm. So now I like how they responded. It gave me a feeling that mm -hmm. I like. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give to someone else. Hopefully getting, it's almost like they get a rush out of the response or it's almost like, I don't even want to put, I don't want to go this far, but there's like a, like I feel needed because they received what I gave them. Mm -hmm. So now I'm necessary mm -hmm. in order for them to feel as though they have something. I'm, you see what I'm saying? I'm the one that's doing it. For them. And then mm -hmm. there's this, this, you know, almost narcissistic rush mm -hmm. that some people get. Well, when we get to that point, then of course it's not coming from your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, that is the emotion of it. And that's the thing that we want to take out of it. If you give to someone not expecting anything, not even expecting a thank you, not expecting even that, you mm -hmm. just want to give because this is what you feel led to do. This is what you want to do to make their lives easier. And I'm going to give this and I'm going on out the way. I'm mm -hmm. not hanging around waiting for you to hug and kiss me and say, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not waiting for all of that. I'm mm -hmm. going to give this because you need this and I'm out. Mm -hmm then you, you kind of want to look at why am I really doing it then? If, if, you know, if I can walk away from a situation, even whether I get a thank you for or not, and I know that I've done well, then perhaps that's not emotional. Maybe that is really from my heart. Mm -hmm. Then I'm just going to hang around and 
you know, see if they'll talk about it the next couple of days later. Oh, I mm-hmm. show do appreciate showing so yeah, you you all you off with that. Mm-hmm. Right. Right, Latisse right. Douglas has joined us. Pam says no grieving and stuff, so can't come on. Sorry. Oh, I, I'm sorry to hear that. I know that this is the time of the year that your brother um, was. Um, no, you're not grieving too bad if you need someone to bake your car off. Now, listen, Pam, I'm trying to get you to come on, though, if you feel up to it. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm trying to follow. People are inboxing and commenting. You got to drop your comments in the comments. You can't put them in the inbox. <laughs> okay. Any advice that you would give to this husband in approaching this conversation um, moving forward? If his goal is moving forward, we're not going to do this again, but I'm going to help you out this time with a little bit. What, what does that, what would you advise to him about that conversation? Let's talk about the list. 